so you're not coming for by the funeral. Good morning to everyone. Before we fully start, I must say a great surprise and blessing to everyone. Now, before I go any further, this guy where in the cafe is my original formal years of coffee, right? So I come to render tribute to him rather than James Kane. So we are coffee. The Lord given the Lord take 
We are only for a time. Ecclesiastes 3 says, we are only here not for a time. So we have to do our best for Jesus. And for our fellow men, we also have to not make the sun waste every day. Some people just waste time, waste the sun, waste hours and everything. But time is not to waste. And every day, before I end, every day some people have something to say. But the final say is Jehovah. Who have the final say? Jehovah have the final say. Jehovah have to break some way when there is no way.
and praise to the name of the Lord because he is good. He is not a dead God, uh, Mr. James. He passed on and he got and leave we behind to serve the true and the living God. Because we do not know one day we have to be in one of those same caskets. And if we had, do not write where the man Christ Jesus will be something else when that day come. So when we hear the word of God, let we take it in. Because the time will not be too long. He said, oh, how sad it will be when I take my department and turn out of heaven without serving God. So we all have to give God praise and thanks. And blessed is the man. Because God is good and he is real all the time. Let we give him the joy. He said that joy that fills our soul. That joy that comforts our hearts. And the joy of God, which is his salvation from Zion. And the salvation from God, it makes we happy. And it makes we happy and beautify. So these is the words of the Lord.
Good afternoon. Could we stand at this time as we allow the casket to go through? I am the resurrection and the life. Whosoever believeth in me, though he die, yet shall he live. Uh, to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck what is planted, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to kill, and a time to build up, and a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, and a time to cast away stones. Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the farewell service of the late Clifton Emmanuel Wilson. That is a moment that all of us have to come to terms with. It's not a good experience, but it is one that we cannot run away from. Whenever it comes, it takes whoever it desires. And the sad part of it is that it leaves our hearts broken. We grieve because we are, our loved one is being taken away. We are not going to see them again on this side of the earth. They will not be roaming the streets of Barley to come to tell us anything. Because in the scriptures we are told one man, when he was dead, he asked Father Abraham if he can send someone from the grave to warn his brothers. He said, they have the prophets over there. And that is what we are assigned to do while we are here, to warn others, to let them know that is coming and they need to prepare themselves. From On behalf of myself, my family, we want to extend our sympathy to the bereaved family. Today, Pastor Lewis is not here, I'm Pastor Edward, so I'm assisting in conducting the funeral service today. So let's celebrate and encourage each other as we say farewell to Mr. Wilson. We will now have an opening prayer. Good morning again to everyone. And now we would call the son of the deceased, Meldon James to do the opening prayer. Morning to all. Let us go to God in prayer. Oh God and Heavenly Father, we come before you today. We want to thank you for the sparing of our life so that we can see another beautiful day. We thank you for everything that you have given unto us, and most of all, we want to thank you for your son. Without him, we know there would have been no remission of sins for us. Whatever we do today with our life, help us to do it in the honor and glory of thy name. We are so thankful that you bring everyone here safely so that they can be here to celebrate with us, and we hope that Whatever is said and done here today, we will take it into our heart and make changes in our life when necessary. May you help us not to grieve or worry over debt, because in your words you said debt is evident. Each man has to die. So let us wrap our minds around debt. We pray that you may forgive us of our many sins that we have committed against heaven and against thee and against our fellow men. We ask that when we sin against our brother, help us to acknowledge that we also sin against thee. May you be with us today in a special way. We pray for this country in a whole, and we ask that you may we pray for the sick, 
We pray for the poor and we pray for the needy. We pray for those who have a lot that they may share unto the poor. We pray for every person under this government and this country that each leaders may do the right thing in order to bring us together in a spiritual affair so that we have a better life. May you direct this service and may you keep us in your loving care. And we pray for every family here today. We pray for those who are going through illness at this time. Father, may you look over them. We pray for every children who are going to school this morning. Father, may you be with them. And may you strengthen them. Look over every parent who have children going to school. That you may provide for them. So that their children will take the education. And they will have a better life when the time is, is right. May you bless us today and bless all of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Melon. And now we turn to our hymn sheet in the sweet by and by. That is our song. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the name of Jesus. Our God is alive and well. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the name of Jesus. We want to give God thanks for his many blessings. Hallelujah. Thanking God for life today. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory be to God. If you have your hymn sheet. In the sweet by and by. Thank you, Jesus. There's a land that is fairer than day. And by faith we can see at the farm. For the further waits over the way. To prepare us a dwelling place there. On the beautiful show, we shall sing on the beautiful show. The melodious song of the bird.
name of Jesus. Thank you, Sister James. We shall meet on that beautiful show once we are prepared and our heart has been made up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise you, Most High God. We praise you and we honor you today. And our next item on the program, Great Niece Dahlia Brown. Scripture reading, the first scripture reading. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, you have. Good afternoon, everyone. The scripture reading is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, reading from verse 51 to 58. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which gives, giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know, that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Here ends the scripture reading. Thank you, Dalia. Now we'd call on Sister James for the continuation of the worship today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. Praise the name of Jesus. Lord, we give you praise. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Let us all stand as we worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hide me now under your wings cover me cover within your mighty hands within your mighty hands when the ocean rise and turn this road
be still I will be still Know you are God I will be still Know you are God Hallelujah, hallelujah Praise the name of Jesus Hallelujah Praise the name of the Lord we gave you praise. We gave you glory. We gave you honor. Hallelujah. He deserves the praises of his people. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship your name. We gave you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hear my cry, O oh Lord. Attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. And when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. That is higher than I. For thou hast a shame. And a strong tower, and a strong tower from the end. And when my heart is over. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I praise you, Lord. I give you all the praise. I give you all the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to God be the glory. Great things he has done. Hallelujah. And it's my turn now as niece of the deceased. And I would be reading from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 from verse 13 to verse 18. Here begin it. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means proceed those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet with the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. That's the word of the Lord. But I would not want to be, what must I say? I just want to say, I cannot be here and do not say something about my uncle. He was my grandmother's, my, our grandmother. Name was Clarice Wilson, better known as Nana. James was the one boy with three girls. And just the order of birth is right, so they die. So James was the last, he, and he died at the oldest age, at 88. Our grandmother died at 85. This same month would have been 39 years since our grandmother passed. What a milestone. And I just want to say today, I used to always visit my uncle. Because from the time I get to understand his health was really deteriorating. I said to God, I said, God, this is my time. I have to evangelize. Hallelujah. And I went and there was sometimes he would say things, whatever. But the last time I visited Uncle James, it was the 29th of August. I prayed. I read the gospel from Paul with encouragement to him. And when I finished, I said to him, say after me. And he said everything I told him to say. And when I was finished, my uncle stretched both hands to me. I did put my hands into Uncle James' hand. I felt a great peace came down upon me. And today, let light perpetual shine upon my uncle Clifton Emmanuel Wilson. I thank God for the time spent with you Uncle James although we didn't you can't hear me but although we never really have that bond in my early life but in the later stage I did what I know I have to do and I am a proud niece today 
I did what God ordained me to do. So today, God, I just want to praise you. I just want to lift you up, God. I just want to magnify you. Hallelujah. Hey, Jesus, thou art worthy. Thou art mighty. Hallelujah. So the tributes now begin with James' daughter, Arison Pompey. And now I call Arison to the podium. Arison, I welcome you. Church, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Glorify God with me. Blessed be your name. Hallelujah. God is God. Hallelujah. All the time. Church, I just want to say as my tribute today. If you knew to yourself that you serve in God, serve him in spirit and in truth. Amen. God is not mock on his promises. Hallelujah. God is not slack. And in Hebrews, it tells us God is a consuming fire. God does not slack. Church, many of us come to church, but we are none of Christ. I am not the preacher, but my desire is to say something to the living and not the dead. Because he gone, and he cannot hear what we are saying. Church, I am living in Barbados to all who know but I am here. I might not have been here, but I am still here. This morning or this evening, I'm going to say to we who call ourselves children of God, let us serve God in spirit and in truth because God is a serious God. What he say he will do, he's going to do. I love God with all my heart, my soul. I was not like this. But let me tell you all, when God will clean you, you're well clean. Study the word of God to show yourself approved. When you study God's word, you can stand anywhere and tell somebody, thus said the Lord. Because the word of God is cleaning us from our sins and cleanse us to all unrighteousness. Children, I want you all to serve God. James can cannot hear us as we didn't live in have to acknowledge what is going on in service now because when you say you're serving God first you have to love yourself as you cannot love your brothers and sisters because it's not me setting as the word of God you must love yourself to love others and then you can love God because if you don't love me, you can't love God. Because you don't see God. You see me every day. Amen. 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 Church is the truth. It's the word of God. If you say you love God that you cannot see. And you hate brothers and sisters. You are a liar. Amen. That's the word of God. That's me. This is my tribute. I am giving. Because my father cannot hear me. Because I remember when I was here with my mother's funeral. My father do a dog with me. And he tell me even when I dead, don't come back at my funeral. But I am here because he cannot hear me. He cannot see me. So I show him that I'm serving a loving God. I love all my family. I am the only girl child between three boy children. And I love them dearly. No matter who don't love me, but I love them dearly. Because you know why? I am serving a risen savior. I am serving a true and a living God. Let us live for Christ. I am speaking to all who say they know God. You have to have a relationship. If you don't have a relationship with him, you do not know him. And this evening, I am happy to be in St. Vincent and the Grenadines to see where my father will be placed. I have a son here, live in America. Also, and come to just keep my company, he said. Because I did not walk with my husband this time. But to God be the glory. 
great things you have done. So each and every one of you, I am encouraging you one more time. Serve God in spirit and in truth. That is my testimony for today. Thank you, Harrison. Daughter of Clifton Wilson. We got to give God thanks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Next on the agenda is St. Teresa Pap Baptist Church.
Haleluya. Haleluya. There is Good afternoon. On behalf of the Barley Methodist Church, I just want to give condolences to us, the bereaved, because some gone to wedding and some not feeling too well. So they're not here today. So on behalf of the Methodist Church, I send my, we send our deepest condolences to the bereaved and to my uncle, may his soul rest in peace. To God be the glory, great things he has done. And now we call on Mr. Straker to say something. I am here this afternoon to show my solidarity with the family and to offer my deepest condolence at the passing of James Kane. I believe this is the third funeral in the family that I am attending within recent times. His grandson, Demal, my adopted son, his wife, Princess, and James was very fortunate in marrying a princess. And now, James. I have known the family for quite a while because they have been the backbone of my support here in this constituency and this community. They live not too far going into the village and they have been pillars in the community. Everybody seems to know Princess and James Kane. They always had a welcoming smile, a word of encouragement and I thank God for what they have done for me and what they have meant to me. I believe James was an estate worker, as most of the older people on the estate, uh, uh, in this community. And I noticed that the older ones are going one by one. I have a deep respect and affection for those who have toiled in the heat of the day, trying to raise a family and to provide for themselves. And when you look at the quality of children that James and Princess have produced, we realize that they were people with an ambition that what they couldn't achieve for themselves, they wanted to see their children achieve and make a, con a further contribution to this country. Two policemen and of course his daughter here from Trinidad who has come here his, uh, uh, to, be with the, to be with the rest of the family. All right, we thank God for them and what they have meant for their father. Now I have to be very, very protective of them because they are now orphans. They've lost mother and father just like me. But I want to encourage them. We have noticed that recently I think I must say that for everybody, we have been attending a lot of funerals. My poor black suit is now getting shine. <laughs> we have one today, and then we have Viking tomorrow. And that's how it is. And I'm very happy to be here. 
I trust that God's sustain in Greece would be extended to the family. Bearing in mind that no matter how old your parents are, when they go, you miss them. You might have had some bad experiences with them, but you think about the good that they have done for you. In your childhood days, and what you are now is because of what they have done for you and to you. They have educated you. They provided food for you. And when you look and see so many people who are vagrants, so many people who go worthless, and you are decent-looking children, I know that you must give your parents thanks for what they have done. This community has lost another of its senior citizens. I would miss them. I would miss him. So that when I come up here, he's no longer there that I can shout, I can call out to. But after labor, there is rest. And we trust that he has made his calling and election sure. Sometimes God places us on our back that we might rest in our beds. And when we rest in our beds, we can have a time of reflection that we can realize even though we have wandered from God, as the song said, though I forget him and wander away, still he doth love me wherever I stray. Back to his dear loving arms would I flee when I remember that Jesus loves me. And it is his love that undergirds and underpins us. We thank God for his love. And if he has come to know Jesus in the pardoning of his sins, we have that blessed hope that one day when the trumpet sounds, he would rise up at the sound of the first trumpet. And those of us who are sleeping in our dusty beds, and those of us who are alive and have our faith fixed in Jesus, we would be caught up together to meet him in the air. May he rest in peace and may his family be blessed. My, again, my condolences to the family. Thank you, Minister Strika. Thank you, Mr. Strika, for that word. And now we'd call on granddaughter Novisha Tony. Good afternoon, everyone. I remember when grandfather just took sick, he was like, wouldn't be dead, no sing no dead song, give me, you know. But I promised him I would sing something, and I hope I bless your hearts today with it. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me all my days. I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful for oh, yes you have all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able oh I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice led me through the fire and in darkest nights you are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend and I have lived in the goodness 
presence of God. Yeah, all my life you have been faithful. Oh, yes, you have. And all my life you have been so, so. Of the goodness of God Your goodness is running after It's running after me Your goodness is running after It's running after me With my life laid down I surrender presentation and we are closing the coming down to the closing of the curtain today but we are preparing ourselves for the most important part the word of God that is the most important part so be blessed today because God's word is always pure and good and now I take my turn and call Pastor Carlton Edwards to the podium. Welcome, Pastor Edwards. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, Sister Griffith and a pleasant evening to everybody. My heart is heavy and I'm feeling sorrowful. The reason being the reason being is I look in this building I am seeing I'm seeing many ladies, mothers, and a few fathers. And so I'm asking myself the question, where are the young men? Where are the young people? 
I am really saddened. And it is suggesting that we have some terrible days to face ahead. Because if our young generation resists Christ, keep away from church, what are we going to be like? I started my Christian journey when I was 14 years old. And I have not regretted it. I sat there and there was competition on the outside, the noise. Very disrespectful. And then when these people are done and they're dead, they want to come and demand that you have a service for them on a Sunday. It is so unfair. No respect. And I hope that we will get around to understanding that God is not mocked. We can't waste all of our substance. And when we are no good, we say, God have mercy upon me. Remember, God will forgive those he choose to forgive. He will have mercy upon those he will have mercy on. That's not for me to determine. But it hurts our heart as human beings when people behave in some very unseeming, uncaring ways. They live so wickedly. And then we come and we say, there's somewhere around God's throne. I ain't judging nobody. But from your fruit, you will be known. And God is a true God. Nobody can bribe him. Regardless of to whatever social strata of society you belong, we can't bribe God. God has one standard. And it's only one way that he has for man to enter into his kingdom. And it is through his son, Jesus Christ. The Bible says he's the what? The way, the truth, and the life. That's the only passage into eternal life. And if we neglect him while we have our strength, while we are alive, it makes no sense we come here and we have three hours service on your behalf. That's not my sermon, but I was moved to say that. Let's pray. Father, you are loving God. You are a merciful father. Lord, you have not dealt with us according to our sins. Had that been the case, none of us would have been here. But you have shown us mercy. And we pray that you will have mercy upon those people on the outside who are making noise, who are showing disrespect to what is being done here. Oh God, we are praying for mercy for all those who think that, Lord, you are not important. We are asking for mercy for all those who think they can live how they want. And then, God, someone can pray them into your heaven. Open our eyes today and our hearts, we pray, that a spirit of conviction shall come upon us. Lord, not just those in this building, but those who are viewing and listening to this broadcast, to the spirit of the living God. Minister to your people, God. Shake somebody today. Let sins be implanted into our hearts this morning. And may the fear of God be cultivated in us. Thank you, Heavenly Father. It's my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to turn your attention to the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 to 8. I will not be reading the text, just one of them I'll be focusing on. But that's where I'll be doing my deliberations from. All right, let me acknowledge Mr. Straker, Honorable Straker. And if there are any other politician, uh, ministers, whoever you are, you're here, let me acknowledge you. Welcome and God bless you today. All right. Today I'm going to be talking about your season is about to end. 
How do you like that? Your season is about to end. And it is based on, the Bible says, under the sun, to everything there is a season. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which was planted. I want you to follow me carefully. <clears throat> I was reading up on the book of Ecclesiastes and it says, this book records an intense search for meaning. The writer was searching for meaning. It's as though meaning meant much to the writer. So he set out on a journey seeking answers. So it's an intense search for meaning and satisfaction in life here on earth. Especially in view of all the injustices and all the absurdities in life. Two days ago we had, uh, we celebrated the International Day of Peace. But while we celebrate that, we have war all over the world. We have war in our families, especially at the death of a loved one. Siblings war over who should get this and who should get that. I hope nobody did this at the death of this man. But the war people war in your workplace we have competition there's jealousy and envy people try to do harm each other so that they can get on top this is what is happening in our world today no wonder the writer had to say can we really find satisfaction and meaning in this life when we look at this book it deals with three very important concepts or look at three important areas and the first is the writer said in this book all is vanity all so everything you can think about in this life the writer says all is vanity what do we mean by vanity it speaks of emptiness, vainness. It is someone who is on a quest seeking for something and never gets there. It's like a chasing after the wind. It is putting your emphasis on something, hoping that that thing will make you happy. But when you get to that thing, you realize that was not the case. Secondly, the writer show in this text, or he counsels the readers, how are the things we are doing that will never bring satisfaction to any of us. Check Solomon, the wisest man. And he was on a quest to try almost everything in life to satisfy him. Remember, this gentleman was chosen to be king over a great nation. And then one time God appeared to him in a dream and said to him, Solomon, ask for what you wish and I will give to you. And very wisely he considered the fact that he was unskilled in terms of leading. He had no leadership experience. He didn't know how to handle a large group of persons. So he said, Lord, I am asking for a wise and understanding heart. I want to know how to lead this great pe people. And so God answered him and hear what the Lord said because he didn't ask to kill your enemies because he didn't ask for wealth I am going to give you wisdom and there will be other things added to you are you following me 
it reminds me of what the scripture says in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. It states, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. Your clothes, you will have clothes. Hallelujah, somebody. You will have to eat. You will have protection. God who loves and cares for his own will never turn his back upon any of his children. Hallelujah. And the final thing I want you to understand here is his counsel. What did Solomon say to us? Understanding the fact that all of life is vanity, he tells us how we ought to conduct ourselves. Doesn't that sound good? Now, this book is applicable to all of us today who are listening. It's not so much about Solomon's experience, but the principles that we can draw out from this text. Its aim is to answer some of life's most challenging questions. Like, who am I? Why am I here? What happens after I'm dead? Where do I go? Do you have answers to those? Do you know where to find the answers? Well, let me tell you. Many persons answer those questions. And some of the answers are misleading. Because if you tell me when I'm dead, I will come in the form of a rat or some kind of thing. That is misleading. That's misleading. I think you and I are too intelligent to believe that. Amen, Vincentian. We have been reading the Bible for years. I'm not saying everything we were taught was in accordance with the scriptures. But we know truth, man, when we see it and when we hear it. And we must reject the false. Remember, God is truth. And remember, there's only one way. So in chapter 3, he says, Everything in this world has a season. We see... 28 activities that are outlined. And it is said that these are intended to symbolize the whole of our life. So we have a time to live, a time to be born, and a time to die. We have a time to build up and a time to destroy. So you have 14 positive as it were, and 14 negative as it were. The opposite. And what they are solving to do is to bring to our attention what is happening in life. Amen. We didn't come here to be like stone as the people say. I believe stone have a season. But we usually say that because you know you always you come, you meet them, you'll die and they're still here. But everything has a season. Now, this morning, it was morning, not you? Now we are in the afternoon. And a few hours from now, we are going to get into the, the night. In some countries, England, those in the north, those in the extreme south, you have winter and you have a time of summer changes in season. The thing I want you to notice, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, is this. When we talk about season, we are talking about a period of time. And what begins in that season will come to an end. So the wise men say, there's a time to be born and a time to what? Die. Do you know that God knows how long each of us will be here? And that 
if we are to live until 80 and you take your money and you go to America to the best doctor, you will not survive 80. Are you understand me? God is a wise God. And I want us to understand this. Nobody can fool him. That is why we need to listen to his words. And not just listen, but to believe his words because God is true. It says, let God be what? True. And everybody else a liar. Even preachers, liars. Because you have false preachers in them. But me and none. And if you're a preacher, make sure you preach the truth, my brother, sister. Amen. They're false one. And they set out to deceive and to mislead people. You know what the Bible said? Deceivers will go about and they will deceive others. But the truth we must all know. So please understand this. God has fixed times for everything under the sun. Well, Mr. Strick, is there, even for politics, there's a time when you and people change, not you. Let me hear all the NDP like say, that's true. There's a time. And when the time comes, it will happen. But it will never happen before the time. So don't try to do nothing stupid to get the time. Because it will work. Are you understand me? Do you know some children do some real evil things to get the benefit from their parents? They force them to sign things. They kill them, try to kill them before their time. Those are some of the wicked things we have to deal with in this life. And let me tell you, you know what the Bible says? It says, man heart. All of, we, all of us, we have wicked hearts. You know why some people are not committing certain crimes? It's because of their position. Take them from there and you go see what happens. My Bible says so, and that is why only God alone can change your heart. No money, no education, no power. Doors don't change people. As a matter of fact, people in those areas, they are so corrupted and some of them so wicked. And they mean, they are the bosses now. No wonder the man say everything under this earth is what? Vanity. There are some changes that God bring about in this earth. And there are some of them that happen as a result of your choices and my choices. The Lord don't want nobody to get locked up for stealing nothing. It's your choice to steal. You're caught, you'll be locked up. And this is a thought I've been trying to get accustomed to. I don't, want, I don't know if you can help me. You are innocent until proven guilty. How can someone who commit an act be innocent? How can that be? You get the best lawyers and they win the case to you. And let me tell you, man is corrupt, eh? All over the corrupt. I'm not pulling down anybody. It's the truth. Man corrupt. Especially if you offer them a piece of money. And this is a time when we really need money. And some people don't have integrity. They will forget their position. They will forget their name. They will forget their family. Cast all those aside and accept bribes. 
because it looks good, but when it is exposed, it destroys everything that you would have built over all these years. So help me understand it. How could someone be innocent who has committed a crime? Where is truth? Where is honesty? How do you expect your children to speak the truth when we as adults, we hide the truth? Man, if you do the thing, what do you say? Huh? Come on, talk to me. Don't be silent now. If you do the, the wrong thing and someone approach you and asks you, what do you say? I did it. The truth shall what? Do you still believe in that? Yes, my friend. You see, a free conscience, a free conscience is very, very important. Because when your conscience is free, you could sleep and you will eat well and you'll be able to laugh. But when this conscience is under pressure because you would have lied, what happened? It bothers you. You can't sleep, you can't eat, you can't relate to people. Then you start to think somebody do you. Nobody do you nothing. It's your conscience you have been work, uh, working against you. We bring some things on ourselves and something God allowed to happen. If you have attained 70 years, praise God. That's your quota. And if you have gone beyond that, that's mercy. And that is why I am calling upon all of us here and those who are listening, give your heart to Jesus before it's ever too late. Let me jump ahead. Ecclesiastes 12 verse 1 says, Remember now. Remember now, today, this moment, while you're alive, while you're strong, while you're in the right mind, while your senses are intact, remember now whom? Your creator. Hallelujah. We didn't fall from trees. Someone is responsible for your and my creation. And that is God who said, let there be and there was. He said to the first couple, be fruitful and multiply. That's why we are here. A time to born and a time to die. To born speaks of give birth, giving birth. It speaks of a woman bearing children. It speaks of a man becoming a father. It speaks of your birthday, the day on which you were born. Why are you responsible for entering into this world? Did you ask your parents to bring you? No. We came about as a result of two parents coming together in one of the blessings given to married people. And so we resulted. Amen. We came about. And we are like him. Amen. A loving God. That is why we must forgive one another. We are like him. We are sociable beings. We like friendship and relationship. We are like him. There's a part of us that will never die. As there is a time to be born and a time to die, so there will be a time to rise again. 
a set time when those that lie in the grave shall be remembered. Job 14 and verse 13 states, Oh, that thou wouldest hide me in the grave, that thou wouldest keep me secret until thy wrath be passed, that thou wouldest appoint me a set time and remember me. Job 14, 10 says, A man dieth and wasted away. Yea, man giveth up the ghost. And where is he? Man is a dying creature. From the time we were born, we begin to die. Amen. Before that, man begin to waste away. You know what I'm talking about. I want you to look back in your youthful days. Remember how sprightly you were? How fat your face was? How nice looking you were? You entered into the mirror and you couldn't move because you were so intrigued by how you look. And then you could have smile and you choose to do it very often. But these days, what happened? The grinders have lessened. Huh? Remember all those days when you used to pull your hand in your hair because it was so curly and black. But what happened? The fewer and the gray. And some of we, we don't want the gray hair. What do we do? We go and we what? We turn them black. We put something in the hair. And we, be, we get in sick in her. And we don't know that in her. We think it's something else. Which and while it could be the chemical we put in there to black we hair. Yes, we are dying, folks. We are dying. Sicknesses. Mr. Straker referred to a number of people who have died in the community. Young and old, intelligent, not so intelligent, rich, poor, whatever. People are dying everywhere. Reminding us that it's a time to be born and a time to die. When is your turn? How many of you would like your turn to be tomorrow? Nobody. You know why? Because life is so sweet. Life has a lot to offer. And that is what is so misleading. Because we go after what it has to offer. And we neglect the person who has made provision for us. You know what people do today? In their quest to become rich, some have sold. They have S O L D. They S O U L to the devil in order to get riches, to become popular, to get into politics and position and power. Are you understanding me? People are doing these things because they were offered something. And you know what? Man wants power. He wants to always be in charge. As a matter of fact, that's how man, God made us to have what? Dominion. But you see, we must get it in the right way. Amen. Not illegally. That will be unfair. And listen to me. Every evil work, every evil activity that you and I are engaged in, in this earth, if we don't stop it, it will lead us into a Christless eternity. Amen. So whatever wrong you and I are engaged in, we can stop it. Today can be the end of that season. And let today be a new season. So I'm saying, we are wasting away. Are you realizing that? Evil days, according to Ecclesiastes 12.1, there are evil days coming. Hmm? Sickness. Ah. Your, 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 your legs used to run and jump. 
What happened? They start shaking. He used to dress up in jacket and tie. Now what happened? The jacket them too big. Because you're losing weight and size. Things are happening to us. That's what I'm saying. Even before death, we are dying. In death. What happened is that we give up the ghosts. The soul leaves the body. That's what happened to this gentleman. The soul leaves the body and return to whom? Return to God who gives it. He's the father of spirit. Now I will talk about that a little more. But let me move on. You know, death comes to us in various ways. We can die naturally from some sickness. Or it could be somebody who hates us, murder us, can be an accident or some disaster. These things come, these things happen. And that is why it is important for each of us to prepare ourselves because we do not know when our season of life will end. So that's what we have to be prepared. Do you know why we die today? It's because our first parents failed to believe God and they rebel against his will. That's why we die today. And the scripture says, it's appointed unto man once to die. I believe that some people will not die. But all of us have the potential to die. Amen. We have a beginning and we will have an end. Whether it is end to hear true death or end to this life through being raptured into heaven. Please bear that in mind. People can also be put to death by legal means. Listen to me. I believe in hanging. Does that surprise you? I believe in hanging. Look what's going on in the world today. I don't have the data. If I'm wrong, I'm stand to be corrected. If people know when they kill others, they are going to be killed. What do you think will happen? They don't want to die. People today don't want to die, you know? People want life. But because they know things have changed and you could get 15 or 20 years and they could come out back, they do what they want. But I believe in hanging. I believe if a man takes a man's life, the state has the responsibility. You get that? The state has the responsibility to take your life. And this is not a political thing now. This is in the scriptures. God is the one who gives life. So nobody has the right to take nobody's life. You're walking down the road, you're driving down, somebody shoot you, dead like that. That's unfair, uncalled for. No wonder the wise man asks, is there really meaning in this life? Why are we living? Why is it that a man could set out on a quest to do all that is right and then somebody who has wicked intention just take his life? After death, the question was asked, where is man after he dies? I want you to follow me carefully. I was having a conversation recently with someone. And the person said to me, I want the coffin of my deceived, deceased loved one to pass first to the house before it goes to the church because I want her to come home. Are you following me? And the person seriously meant that. Where did that come from? Folks, understand that after that, he is not where he used to be. The man used to live up there, right? Well, after that, he's no more there. 
He ain't going to know if he used to go rum shop. He ain't going by no rum shop. And if he used to like to talk and give joke, you're not going to hear anymore. Because you know what happened? The scripture say he will no longer know his what his place. He can't go back to his house. He is finished with this life. When a man commit a crime, like I usually put it to people, I forget the word he used when you lock him up. Um, you keep him there before he's tried. There's a word to use, I forget it. Remind, yes, thank you. Is he free to go to Kentucky to buy chicken? So how when a person dies, you think that he or she is free to roam the street of Barley? Calling you, Mildred. <laughs> Cookie. <laughs> James, what's your name? Yeah, huh? Baby J, grandpa now come back, call Baby J. <laughs> so, if tonight you hear how he used to call it, Baby J, <laughs> all right, if you hear that tonight, now he, no, it is true, we need to understand this. When a person dies, they have nothing to do with this life again. Oh, but pastor, I heard that people go to the burial ground and they invoke spirit and send them upon people. Yes, I heard that too. It is true. It is true. Evil is real. But remember, it is not the person in the grave. Get that? It's not the person in the grave. The person finish with this part of life. Amen. Finish, finish, finish. There is no coming back here. They gone to a place it says, remember when we read it a while ago? When a person die, the spirit go to, the, to whom? To the Lord. And even though it says to the Lord, don't think you're going to be in a place where there's happiness, you know? Listen to this. In Luke 23, 43, when Jesus was on the cross, and there were two thieves, one said to him, if you are the Christ, man, come down from the cross and save us. Save yourself. And there's another one. The other one. I forget which, which hand he was on. Which hand he was on? Whichever hand he was. He said, Lord, remember me when thou comest where? In paradise. And Jesus said, today, thou shall be with me in where? Paradise. You know what is paradise? It is said that in those ancient days, um, where those kings were. They had like gardens and a lot of trees and the place used to look real good, well kept. There's a kind of serenity and you used to be happy being in those environments. So paradise speaks of the blessed happiness that a Christian enjoys after a, he or she departs this life. So, Pastor, what happened to those who die out of Christ? Well, in Luke chapter 16, it says two men died. One went into where? Abraham's bosom. And another went where? To hell. And there he was in torment night and day. And you know, a conversation ensued. Say, Father Abraham, send Lazarus that he will get a little bit of water, put it in my tongue because what? I'm tormented in these flames. And he was asking, he said, 
send me out from here so that I will go back and warn all my James brothers and sisters. And what he said? He said, watch this. He said, if even though we send somebody from a grave, what going to happen? They ain't going to believe. And besides, they have all them preachers. They have Sister Griffith and Sister James and the others. They have all them preachers out there. Let them hear them. And you know what? They ain't listening to us. They ain't listening to us. But when any pan knock up on the road, they start to come out like, out like what? Crazy ants or red ants. You don't know. And excuse me, Mr. Politician. But when politics come and the bell ring, you see them going, 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 going. But they don't want to come in the house of God. Shame at our people. We need to put God where he belongs. Amen. Put him where he belongs. The truck come around and he's sharing provision. And boy, what happened? They flock it. Because people are concerned about taking care of their what? Their immediate satisfaction. But let me remind you today. There is a need in every heart for God. There is a place in your life for God. And nothing in this world can ever satisfy. Nothing can take the place. That's why you need a church. That's why you need to read the Bible. That's why you need to go to God for yourself. I'm not telling you about religion today. Religion don't save. You need a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. So Jesus said, today, you will be with me in paradise. Oh my God. I want to be there when I die. Hallelujah. Come on. Do you want to be there when you die? Hallelujah. I want to be there when I'm dead. Hallelujah. Oh yes. My body might be in the coffin. My body might be in the grave. But my soul will be with my heavenly father. Let me conclude by saying Solomon said all of life is meaningless. The context of the book as a whole suggests that the point is that meaning in life follow me carefully cannot be found outside of God. In as much as education is important, having a job and the necessities of life, those are good. But they don't give meaning to life. That is what Solomon said because he had all of those. And he said, it's like chasing after the wind. We need to recognize that God is the source of all things. And in him alone, life finds purpose. Apart from God, however, everything ends in futility. And I want to end by reading two verses of scriptures. Ecclesiastes 12, 13, it says, This is the last word. All has been said. Fear God and keep his commandment. Because this is right for every man to do. Amen. This is the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. Respect God. This is the whole duty of man. And God will judge every work. With every secret thing that is done under the heaven. Whether it is good or evil. Let's bow our head, close our eyes. I want to give you an opportunity. 
to give your life to Jesus. This is not something to be afraid or to be ashamed of. This is one of the best decisions that you can ever make in your whole life. You know why? Because it has to do with your eternal destiny. I want to make an appeal right now. Is there anyone, be it male or female, you heard this word today and you are convinced in your heart that you need to change and give Jesus your life. Just raise your hand for me, please. I'll pray for you. I don't think take funerals for granted. Is there anyone? Your season is about to end. Are you ready for death? One more minute. Is there anyone in this building? Or maybe those of you online. I hope we're online. You cut, you cut off line already? I hope you're online. Those of you online right there. You can bow your heart and say, Jesus, come into my heart. I'm a sinner. Forgive me of all my sins. I ask you to be my Lord and my Savior. And from this day, I promise that I will live for you. Let's pray. Our oh, Father, thank you, Lord, for this word today. Lord, I know that this word is true because it's based upon the word of God. I know that your spirit is speaking to hearts now. Holy Spirit, convict, Lord, and draw them to the place where they will say yes to Jesus. Open their eyes today. Oh, God, have mercy, Jesus. Have mercy, Jesus. I want to ask the family to stand, please. Have mercy, Jesus. Stand. I want the family to stand. Have mercy, Jesus. Our oh, Father, I leave the family before you, the grieving family. Lord, when you were here on earth, one of your friends died. And we are told you wept. You wept for many reasons. And so God, you know what it is to grieve. You know what it is to be a pain. You know what it is to lose a loved one. We know that they are not going to see him again. Because he's gone. Lord, you know the sorrow. You feel it. For you are touched with the feelings of infirmity. And I'm praying that as a God of comfort that you will stretch forth your hands now. And release upon them a spirit of comfort. Encourage them today. I pray that the death of their loved ones will cause them to think about their own season and if they are not prepared to do so Lord before it's ever too late I pray for mercy upon all of us we thank you for your goodness upon all of us Lord and the Bible says your goodness lead to repentance oh Lord God may we acknowledge you before it's ever too late this is my prayer in Jesus name Amen. God bless you. Praise God. We want to thank you. Pastor, we want to thank you for coming out here today to celebrate with us. We want to give God thanks most of all for his goodness and as you're about to go to the cemetery, we want to give God thanks in everything. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Let us all stand at this time. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. This train is a holy train. This train. This train is a holy train. This train. This train is a holy train. Everybody, right?
Et dans le temps, on prend ce stint de nous, nous sommes mourus. Nous sommes ouverts, nous sommes soins, nous sommes ouverts, nous sommes soins. Nous sommes ici. Nous sommes ouverts. Nous sommes ouverts. Oh, mais je garde son modèle, elle est baissée. Nanki, 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 I hope they ain't coming to do it. But I want to think they go come to you. Know? Like they say, we play with spot. Huh? I mean, see the left now for the house park. You go wrong park? No. Do you not remember your grave and them were dead? Yeah. If I miss a mark on one day? Where is it? That one with it and them funny? I was sure. Eh? I was sure with it. Which one has a brown one? But then there's a bush there. So now that one right here, so? No. Now that? So now that? Eh? Do you see the wrong grave? Yes, I'm good. Hey, how are you doing? What do you say? Not quite back there, man. Do you see that one?
آره و تو
one and friend. Here is the form of one whose memory we shall treasure. Some of us have shared through these passing years a wonderful companionship with our loved one. Let us cherish the many memories that one has to remember and come to us at this time. And let us each of here purpose in our hearts to seek the Lord with all our hearts and respond to the opportunities of salvation extended to us through his grace. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Amen. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is there. At this time we say, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, ashes. dust to dust. Oh, yes. Yeah,
said, I was in an apple and put me. And they can't take my money and what tongue was going to buy six floors. And, and, and bearing ground can them? Frozen. No more grave now, they get no. Then don't find peace all along a pit, so you yeah, can't go down in your mouth. That's what I'm saying. I'm going to go. That's okay. You have to go to Bush now.